So thank you very much for your introduction and uh, greetings to you all. So this work, it, uh, uh, this work is a work that I worked with uh, assistant professor Kane Chishima and professor Ken Sato, and we are from NAI and so can die in Tokyo, Japan. So this uh, presentation is divided into four sections and show here. So let's go, uh, let me give some background of this work. So in this work, we consider the problem that the literal interpretation of schedules may lead to counterintuitive consequence. Which are the, uh, the, the counterintuitive consequence are the consequence that do not meet the social expectation and occur, and the consequence occur since the social expectation is evolved or exceptional cases happen unexpectedly in their life. So this kind of consequence cause absurdity, strange behaviors, or leads to public interest if the consequence were not properly handled. So judges, especially in high courts, may handle this kind of consequence by considering the exceptional situation of the case and make the legal judgment uh, uh, known as the case law that devised the, the interpretation of the statute to handle the exceptional, the exceptional situation. So in this work, we consider minimal revision. This is one common criterion from the standard revision theory. Uh, we reset it to adjust uh, theories as little as possible. So minimal revision can be divided into two main types. The first type, as we call uh, syntax-based minimal revision, is to keep the set of rules as close as possible to the original one. So this type of minimal revision is independent from the facts of the case. And the second type is a semantics-based minimal revision, which is to minimize the change of the set of conclusions obtained from the theory. So this type of minimal revision depends on the facts of the case, since different facts give different sets of conclusions. So although the syntax-based minimal revision is benefit from the, the independence of the facts of the case, we are good at the semantics base is more preferable in legal listening. Since legal listening is a hybrid listening between loop-based listening and case-based listening. So therefore, we propose here one kind of semantic-based minimal revision called a, no, a dominant-based minimal revision. So this solves some problems in attempting to develop a semantic-based minimal revision. So let me give some uh, settings of this work. So in this work, uh, we consider a normal logical gap known as also known as a local lock program for representing the schedule at its many previous works. So a normal logic program or here after a program in chart is a set of rules in the form of head, if, the body. Where the body is divided into two parts. Uh, the first part is the positive body and the, neg the second part is the negative body containing the negations. Where the negations here, it shall be interpreted as uh, negation as failure. So in civil litigation, a judge would make correspondence between factual situation in the case and factual concept in schedules. Then the judge would conclude a legal decision based on the schedules. So to reflect this civil litigation, we determine uh, propositions into two types. The first type is uh, new proposition and the second type is fact proposition. So the fact domain is the set of all fact propositions in the language. And the case is a subset of the fact domain. So we define the fact base and the loop base as shown, and we get that the answer set is the set of conclusion from the union of the fact base FB with a loop base U, RB. So it, this represents the literal interpretation of the statue, uh, which, represent, which is represented as RB when applying in a particular case that's represented by FB. 
So we did not a uh, proposition P is in the answer set of FB union RB by FB union RB derives P. So exceptional case is the case that the judge disagrees with the, with the literal interpretation in the case and the judge introduced a new factual concept to distinguish the case as exceptional. So we formalize the agree and disagree as follows, saying that FB unit FB1, uh, the fact that FB1 union with the root base RB1 agrees with uh, the fact that FB2 union with the root base RB2 on some proposition P, if uh, it's derived in the same, uh, they derive in the same manner or they, just, they do not derive P in the same manner. So otherwise we say that if B1 union and B1 disagrees with B2 union and B2 on P. So now we can uh, formalize the counterintuitive consequence resolution task or CCR task in short, which is the tuple of RB, FBE, and P. Where RB is a rule based representing statues and FBE is a fact-based representing exceptional case. It contain at least uh, one new fact proposition not occurring in RB. So P is a rule proposition representing the considered uh, counterintuitive consequence. And we call some rule based RB palm is a list as, as a resolution to the uh, CCR task. If FBE union RB palm disagrees with FBE union RB on P. So this imply uh, the counter in the consequence uh, is resolved, the P1. So uh, let me let's take the example. Let the fact domain be the set of ABC. And this is the simple rule base of P if A, Q if, uh, sorry, P if Q, Q if A, Q and Q if B. So suppose P here is a counterintuitive consequence and we apply this exceptional uh, form applying this rule base in an exceptional case represented by the set of AC. Then we get that uh, there are two main, many resolutions to uh, this CCR task. One is to add the, uh, the exception not R in the first rule like this. And then we add the rule R if P. IFC. And then the second way is to add not R in the second rule, and we add uh, the rule R if C. Uh, both, are, uh, both are the resolution to this CCR task. So we use the concept of a copy in digital debugging to specify which rule should be an exception, uh, which is not R to be put in. So for example, we say that RB2 aims to resolve uh, the carpet P because it add in not R in the supporting rule of P. Why uh, RB3 it aims to resolve the uh, carpet Q since it's add in, in the supporting rule of Q. So we consist uh, the this kind of semantics of a loop base and the semantics minimization. So we consider semantics of a loop base RB as a set of all pairs between the possible fact bed FB and the answer set, the answer set of FB union RB. So for example, this is the RB1 and RB2 some from previous slides. Uh, so we get this, this kind of possible fact base that interpolate from the fact domain of ABC. And then we have the answer set of uh, uh, corresponding to the Lubis RB1 and the Lubis RB2 as shown here. So we get that the symmet symmetric difference of this answer set uh, will contain, would contain R if the fact base contains C because the new rule is R if C. Therefore, we have R in all fact, such fact base. And the set of C, the set of AC, the set of BC, and the fact base of ABC. So to eliminate this kind of effect, we can consider we consider partial symmetric difference uh, with respect to some set. So as per the set of P here, so we create the intersection between the given set and the symmetric difference. 
then we get that uh, there are three rows. But uh, in this example, there are three rows such that it contains the set of P as uh, this partial symmetric difference. So for another example, when we as we have the RB3 that add not R in the second loop instead of the first loop. We get that in the same manner, we get uh, the partial symmetric difference only in the row that's corresponding, that's correspond to the fact base FB, as AC. So we can see that RB3, this guy RB3 has a smaller change than RB2 from uh, the original loop base RB1 with respect to the set of P. And it seems that RB3 is the cement is a symmetric based minimal revision with respect to P, the set of P among all the solutions to the CCR task. Seeing so if we would like to have a smaller change than this RB3, we need to make this law to be empty set. But to make such thing, it make that uh, it's not a really solution to the exceptional case of AC anymore. So we can consider RB3 as a symmetric based seems. However, there are two problems in such uh, definitions of minimal revision. So it is exhaustive to interpolate the answer set for each fact base. And the minimal revision is spoken when the fact domain is extended. So let's make it something with the example that suppose we extend the fact domain in the previous example to the set of A, B, C, D. Then we get these following tables. And we get that uh, the law that have non empathy set with the set of P in this case contains in the row corresponding to uh, the fact that AC and also ACD. So it's guys that there exists a resolution, some solution RB palm that has smaller change than RB3 uh, by uh, instead. There's such RB palm which would have no change. So this law will be empty set as it is then. However, we consider such uh, resolution RB palm to be too specific because we need to change uh, two times. The first one is to change corresponding to a AC, and we need to uh, reverse back uh, in the fact base ACD. So to solve those problem, we consider that each fact base has a corresponding uh, specific loop base and dominant loop base uh, with respect to the considered constraints. So we say some subset uh, SR of A, A B is of whole loop base RB is specific to the fact base FB with respect to uh, the whole loop base RB and on uh, position P. If SR is a minimal subset, uh, in the set of in the same offset inclusion such that uh, if we union with such as R with the F given if we disagree on the F, uh, union the whole loop is R B with such F B on P. And no mid uh, intermediate loop base S R palm so that is in between S R and R B. And if we union S R palm disagree with if we unit is uh, on P. So specific uh, loop base uh, might not be unique. And we, if, we, uh, if we have some specific loop base, set of specific loop base, we say that a dominant loop base is a set of specific loop base, but, remove, uh, but removing the negative body of the loop. So let me illustrate with the example that we have uh, loop base RB1 and RB2 as uh, previously illustrated. And uh, we say that the domain difference of the dominant base semantics is considered by the pair of dominant loop base changes. Regardless how many fact base would uh, dominant loop base are changed in that way. So for, uh, for the example of RB1 and RB2, we get that there are three patterns that have been changed. So as shown here, the first uh, these three rows. So for the another example that we have RB3, where the second uh, not R is added in the second row, 
we get that they have only two patterns that have changed. One is the pattern of the, the uh, corresponding to the surface AC, and another is corresponding to is correspond to the fact base uh, ABC. So this pattern uh, also auto is was uh, we we uh, same when we extend the fact domain. So uh, if we extend it to ABCD, we will have the same pattern here, but we uh, uh, does not count how uh, the fact base is, but only count the patterns. So that this kind of difference. Uh, is independent from the extension of the fact domain. So to obtain this kind of a dominant loop base, one way is to extend the body of the new rule so that it influences the dominant uh, loop base as least as possible. For example, if we uh, suppose we would like t is as a culprit and we add not r in the first rule, then the way to make minimal revision is to extend AC, uh, the new rule as R if AC instead of R if C. Then we get only two revision that uh, have in the, that have in, that sorry, only two changes that in the, the rows. Mr. Bertara, five more minutes, please. Right. So, uh, given a CCR task, uh, let me let's say with the working example that given a CCR task of JRB1, JRB1, uh, which is the loop based represent uh, Japanese civil code article 612. And this talk about the cancellation of the least contact due to the subleasing without permission. And this, uh, uh, to prove that the cancellation due to sublease, we need to prove. Uh, for requisite. The first one is the list contact must be effective. The second one is the sub list contact must be effective. And the third one is the listing uh, use. And finally, the cancellation is manifested. And this one exception, then this is sub list has been improved before cancellation, then cancellation due to sub list shall not be valid. So this effective contact have one, has one rule, rule R2. But the FAT survey contest supports that there are two rules, R3 and R4. Yeah, so there are two types of uh, FAT sublease contact. And this one exception rule so is about the effort of sublease here in R5. And, and we have the exceptional, the exceptional case that uh, have this kind of six facts, which literally uh, make cancellation due to sublease to be valid. But uh, the the judge indicates uh, the facts about non-destruction of confidence as an extra fact, and this, and would like that, and does, and did not intend that cancellation due to sublease to be valid in this case. So the cancellation due to sublease is a uh, our counterintuitive consequence. Yeah. So one way to invite to have the solution of this is to add new exception. Why the new session is derived from non discharge of confidence, the, the next effect. However, we get that this JRB2 will make unnecessarily change to the dominant loop base of the relevant case that uh, with the broad case of sublease, a second kind of sublease, since it will execute the exception as shown in this table. So, another resolution is uh, as shown that instead we let we, we have the new rule of accession that derives from these three conditions. So when compile this kind of uh, this kind of loop base and fact base and execute this uh, uh, dominant loop base, we get that the, the dominant loop base of this kind uh, of this JRBT uh, does not make uh, unnecessary change occurring in JRB2. JRBT is actually a dominant based minimal revision. Utility this this new rule for the new exception box of the type of sublease and allow only the type of sublease that relevant to the patient case. So let me have the conclude of this presentation that in this work we propose a dominant based minimal revision this is a kind of semantic space minimal revision, and this solves two problems in attempt to develop semantic space minimal revision. One is uh, 
is this is not required to calculate a set of all contribution for each case and is unaffected by the fact domain extinction. And in further, we would like to develop a effective algorithm for finding such minimal revision and the applications for other type of legal representation and other type of revisions and application for the case where the revision impacts several rules. So we hope that this minimal revision may lead to impact analysis in legal formalisms and may contribute to improving coherence in law. So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward for the question. Thank you very much. Questions from the audience, okay? The first, first one from Mrs. Judith Garcia. How can we define a counterintuitive consequence? Right. Thank you very much for the questions. Uh, so, uh, so in this setting, in, in this uh, work, uh, we consider the setting uh, called a legal debugging, which we assume that a legal listening system derives consequence from the literal interpretation. And user works as uh, an oracle query of an unknown set of intended interpretation. And we determine a counterintuitive consequence is a consequence in the symmetric difference between consequence of literal interpretation from the system and the consequence of the, inten of the intended interpretation uh, from the user. So this is uh, the brief definition of counterintuitive consequence. And we call such thing legal debugging because uh, we, we make uh, iterations to our user whether the related consequence are counterintuitive consequence. And this is how we determine uh, the things that are called a culprit, which is uh, the, far, the root, which we determine as a root of the counterintuitive consequence. And that we put the exception in. So this is uh, the definitions of counterintuitive consequence and the culprit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wachara. Now, are you able to answer a second question? Yes, I, I, so I have the second question about uh, yeah, can, uh, can, little can, in, can you read it for us or would yeah. you like to read for you? Uh, so the question that I, the second question that I have is does the model proposed in the paper consider only counterintuitive consequence that arise from the detailed interpretation of the news and also those uh, that arise from other methods of le legal interpretation. So if the answer is negative, is it possible to build a model capable of considering other methods of legal interpretation? So thank you very much for the question. Uh, it's interesting. First, we assume that the system Auto, sorry, auto we assume that the system uh, represents a digital interpretation of the rules, but uh, it, that is uh, the, uh, the, the primary presumption. However, if, uh, if, uh, if the user represents uh, the, the system as any, it can represent the system in any application, any kind of interpretation, so that such in interpretation that it fixed from the system, it shall be uh, determined as one that uh, we would like to, to, uh, to say that it is original interpretation and uh, the difference between intended one from the user and the one that uh, obtained from the system uh, is, counted, uh, is counted in this kind of counterintuitive consequence also. So this is uh, one way to formalize this type of uh, uh, interpretation uh, that we have, although it's not a literal interpretation, uh, but it's one, one that had been represented in the as a root base, and the one that we have intended in interpretation in the user's mind. Thank you very much, Mr. Wachara. So, uh, now so you have you very much. a minute for, for final words. So thank you very much for your uh, questions and comments. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I hope that uh, I, I, I have uh, received many 
recommendation uh, recommended papers also so uh, thank you Laura, for that and uh, i would uh this is very interesting and i will uh further read this uh this paper theory so uh, thoroughly so thank you very much